So the Dallas Cowboys drafted Dak Prescott replacement in the first round of the NFL draft this year. Great question posed by NFL Live on ESPN. You know, I really wasn't thinking about this when I was going through my draft prep and kind of mock drafting and whatnot. I didn't think about Dak Prescott being replaced, but it does kind of line up. It reminds me of the end of Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, where they don't need that quarterback to step in right now, but they are ready for a new quarterback to step in. Dallas is in a transitionary period. We've seen it with you know, Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott even leaving in, in past seasons. They're kind of in that shift where the worst part of the team or the most stagnant part of the team now is Dak Prescott. So bringing someone in, if it's Michael Penix or if it's someone where, you know, let's say they fall in love with Michael Pratt or Michael Penix or Spencer Rattler or any of these guys we're hearing about, it would make sense for them to kind of jump up and take them. Now in round one, I don't know. Because in round one, they, they're in like mid-20s. So who are we talking about? Basically just Penix, maybe Bo Nix if he slides. Could that be an option? I don't know about that. I'd probably, what I would do if I was Dallas, I would take who I want in the first round. And then if I think I can trade back into the first and take Penix, like the Ravens did with Lamar Jackson a few years ago where they took their guy, uh, Hunter Henry, I believe. Is, no, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst is who they took. Then they traded up to get Lamar or trade it back in the first to get Lamar. So if Dallas wants to take their first round pick, trade back in there, take Penix at the end, that, I I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Our resident GM, Mike Tannenbaum, sees him as a first rounder and in typical Mikey T fashion, he has an out of the box idea about who should draft the Washington quarterback. If you're the Dallas Cowboys and you really want to make things interesting, picking in the late 20s in the first round of this year's draft, what might you consider doing? Take Michael Penix, and here's why, Greeny. Last year, Deontay Banks with the 24th pick averages roughly $3.3 million. So if the four of us were running an FLT, we would all say that Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Michael Penix today. But if one's making $55 million a year and one's making 3.3, think about all. All right, now here's the question. Okay, here's the question. Let's say you take, and um, maybe, maybe Mikey T will get to it, but if you take... Like, I understand what he's saying, right? I understand what he's saying about the contract. But that is that is under the presumption that you're going to get rid of Dak Prescott. So are you just, you're drafting Penix and he is your starter? Because that's a whole different idea than I thought we were going to be talking about. I thought we were talking about take Penix, try and work something out with Dak, and then probably next year move off of Dak and go with Penix. But... If you're, I mean, that is a full-on reset. If you're talking about, let's get off Dak now, and then let's just start Michael Penix straight away, I don't hate it, because I think that Dak has, Dak and the Dallas Cowboys, they have kind of hit the ceiling. I mean, we know what the ceiling is. It's about 12, 13 wins in the regular season, and then maybe a playoff win, and then that's probably about it. So this probably isn't a bad time to do it, when you start considering Dak's contract situation where, you know, they're already looking at not being able to figure out, uh, reach a deal to where Dak could be like the biggest dead cap hit in, in NFL history. So if that, if they're that far away from a deal and they think Penix can do it, cause that's the question. Like you don't want to draft somebody. If Penix comes in and he is average, I think you do it. If you told me you could guarantee that Michael Penix would be a top 16 quarterback in the NFL, just bang average, or 16th. Let's say you told me he could be the 16th best quarterback in the NFL for his first year. He could get better, sure, after that, but that's what you're going to get for that first year. I'd probably do it. I'd probably say, okay, that's, that's enough. But if Penix can't play and you draft Penix, get rid of Dak, that is an enormous risk. Enormous risk. Because then if you do that, you are in, like, let's say you draft Penix and, and tell Dak to kick rocks. And let's say Penix is Desmond Ritter. And you're looking around like, oh, my God, we, are, we, are, we have now set ourselves back so far because we were, at the minimum, double-digit win team, playoff-type team, maybe, a win, maybe, you know, catch fire, win a couple games in the playoffs. That's who the Dallas Cowboys are right now. You can go from that to, like, a 500 team or worse. If you switch Dak out for a Desmond Ritter, Ritter type player, 
And then you put yourself in a situation where you got to sign. You are desperate to overpay signing a free agent quarterback. And if you're going to do that, you might as well have just paid Dak Prescott. So it is such a gamble, such a risk. It all depends on that deal. Can they work something out with Dak? All the other players that just walked out the door, most notably someone like Tyron Smith, that could be a Dallas Cowboy. Leave it to Mikey T to come up with something oh, to for give a us there. fuel on a Friday. Mina, Sam, and Jeremy with us. Let's start with you, Acho. Should the Cowboys, who have a lot of needs, uh, consider drafting a quarterback in the first round? I wouldn't be opposed if that quarterback is Michael Penix Jr. Why do I say that? Michael Penix Jr. over his first four years in college had back-to-back-to-back-to-back season-ending injuries. There's this injury history, but the last two years, he's been fully healthy, and not only that, he's led college football in passing yards both last year and the year before last. Maju plays in the same conference as Caleb Williams, right? So beat him head-to-head. And so for me, if I'm Dallas and I have Dak Prescott on the last year of his contract, you draft a guy in the late 20s who could, if he was healthy, be a top three pick, all of a sudden you have a quarterback for now and potentially for the future. Let's say Dak plays outstanding. Michael Penix learns from him. Let's say you have... Okay, see, Sam's kind of saying what I'm saying, where you draft him and then you let Dak play and then move off of him. But the original... Mike, Mike Tannenbaum was talking about, like, you basically draft Penix and that's it. Like, you you draft Penix to play now. If, if Dak plays and then you draft Penix with the assumption that you are not going to re-sign Dak, after the season, I think it's fantastic. I think I think it's a great idea. I, I just don't know if you waste your first round pick on this because you do have other needs. I would like to see Dallas move back into the first, a late first round pick, get two mid mid twenties first rounders, and, and then do this plan. Have an Aaron Rodgers situation with Jordan Love. Oh I yes, think it's, it's God still holds dog. for the Cowboys. Absolutely. Am I on another level, or am I on another level? What did I say? Reminds me of Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay at the end of, of, of his tenure. Same thing. God bless, I'm on another level. Absolutely, but I'm not totally against the idea of drafting a quarterback if that quarterback's name is Michael Penix Jr. Yeah, I, I don't... Now, hold on. Now, now, before Mina, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I have heard a lot of people say Spencer Rattler is the man. So, if you think Spencer Rattler and Michael Penix are pretty close, and I'm not saying they are, but if you are saying that, if you're a player eval guy for the for the Cowboys and you think you think Rattler's just as good, then you do this same plan, but you take Rattler in the third. And then you don't have to waste that first round pick. I don't love this idea or the fit for Penix. Um, Sam mentioned Jordan Love, you know. I don't like the fit for Penix because Penix is a you know shotgun, throw it around 50, 60 times a game kind of guy. What do the Cowboys do? They're a run first, run oriented offense, this power run that then bleeds into the pass game, they don't really want to play how Penix wants to play. So it really isn't a great fix or a fit. It, it, the better fit would probably be like a Bo Nix, somebody who is okay with just you know, running the ball and then when he's got to be efficient and make those kind of short, you know, the short, decisive passes, sure. But just a gunslinger, get back, at, get back there and shotgun and let it rip. Like Michael Penix, that's... that's that's probably not going to be it. Even a J.J. McCarthy type would probably be a better fit than Michael Penix. You know, just basically McCarthy was running uh, Dallas's offense or that style, the power run style offense. He was doing that in Michigan. So I don't think McCarthy's going to drop to mid-20s, but he would be a better fit than Penix. You know, Jordan Love was extremely young and raw coming into the NFL. Obviously, he sat not... It's a great point, too. I mean, he's about to say it. Penix is older. Penix is older. He's got some wear and tear on his body. He's got some injuries. You know, love. He was young. He could sit. Penix is already old. So if he sits, then you're talking about turning the keys over to what, a 26 year old? Something like that. So the age and all that really isn't a great fit either. Not because of that, but because he was <coughs> playing behind Aaron Rodgers, who's still playing at an extraordinarily high level. But Penix, I view as much more of a finished product, not just in terms yeah. of his age. He is an older prospect, but he's played a lot of football. To yeah, me, a, a better destination for him would be a team like, I don't know, Las Vegas, maybe not at 13, but yeah. at some point in the draft Agreed. where he can come in and compete. Whereas with Dallas, I still view this as a playoff roster and maybe their approach yeah. to the offseason hasn't been as all in as uh, Jerry Jones once said, 
But in the draft, you have an opportunity to augment an offensive line that really is the biggest area of need here with Tyron Smith and yeah, Tyler Biotish sure. walking out the door. They might kick out, you know, have Tyler Smith, who's been very good play left tackle. But at 24, I think they're going to have some pr- their, their pick of some pretty talented offensive linemen. And this is a team that has been exceptionally good at drafting and developing at that position. Yeah, they also. Yeah, I think, I think Mina nailed it. I think it's. It just doesn't, it sounds cool because people like the idea of Penix and they think, but none of it fits. Like it doesn't add up timeline wise. It doesn't really add up as far as scheme. There's, there's better options in other places. And then it kind of does send mixed signals. If you're the Cowboys, like you're a playoff roster, you're a playoff team. You want to risk resetting for what, you know, like why would you risk that when you don't really need, need to do it? So uh, it, the idea is okay. I think it's just like to throw Penix in there. It's just like, ooh, this name is cool. Boop. But then you're not thinking about the fit, the scheme, the timing, any of that stuff. So, not not a bad idea, but it just doesn't doesn't line up. So have Trey Lance sitting there in their quarterback doesn't room. Matter. We'll see what happens there. So Jeremy, this is all, of course, under the prism of Dak's contract situation yes. there in Dallas. What do we know? What's the latest? Well, Hannah, I talked to somebody directly with the team who said that the notion that the Cowboys don't want to re-sign Dak Prescott after this year is false. They are going to try. Now, can they find common ground on the contract when Prescott has unprecedented leverage here? The $60-plus million cap hit this year, dead money on the contract next year. It's going to be hard for them to do, but I do expect them to try. They still see Prescott as their long-term answer. They have Trey Lance as a developmental quarterback right now, but... All off-season signals are that they're going to try to re-sign their big three at some point. Prescott? Yeah, I mean, and that's what I was saying with the contract where Dak has all this leverage where if they can't come to an agreement, then Dak has the leverage to basically, you know, just not, he, he doesn't have to sign. So then all of a sudden you're talking about can, can Dallas swallow a 50, 60, 70, upwards of $90 million dead cap hit? Biggest in NFL history. So I don't think they can do that either. So, and Dak's not going to sign a one-year deal, right? So... There, there's a lot of Dallas has had a very confusing offseason because they haven't been all in and they still don't really have an answer. Certainly not long term. They don't, don't really have an answer even this year as far as a commitment to their quarterback. So drafting Penix and having Lance and, you know, Pollard walks and Tyron Smith. Well, it's just a lot of moving in pieces for Dallas for a team that going into last season seemed like they were all in. So right now. Dallas looks a little shaky. I mean, it really does. It, they look like a very shaky organization. They look like a very unstable franchise. And, you know, is, is that the right time to blow it up? Is that the right time to reset with Michael Penix in the first round? Mm, I don't know. I mean, on, on one on one side of things, it isn't a bad time to reset because you already are in this huge transitionary period. You maybe do take this risk, but, man, is it a risk. Like, you're, you are putting a lot on Michael Penix Jr., you're basically saying he's the best quarterback in the draft. I mean, you're basically saying he is not a developmental product. He's coming in here. He's letting it rip. We are confident he can come in and be just as good as Dak Prescott with the possibilities of being better. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a huge gamble. I don't think Jerry. I don't think. I don't think this is really Jerry's. Jerry's style, but it is a fun idea to think about. C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons. A lot of work to do there in Dallas. Let's. Yeah. All right, there you go. Fun conversation. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Would you reset it? Would you say, hey, Dak, see you later, my guy? And it's Michael Penix time? Or uh, would you sign Dak, pay Dak, and try and just keep, you know, hit, just banging your head against the wall and hope that Dallas can break through that, that ceiling and, and start winning the playoff games? But fun conversation. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I will see you in the next video.